Today is the feast of Christ the King. It's kind of a famous feast, has a long history, very interesting history. And it is, it is built on the first level because we associate Jesus with God, the Son of God, right? That kind of gives you power, right? Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. He's the creator, right? He's the word made flesh. You can see what the, why it makes sense of Christ the King. We have, uh, <clears throat> we have stories uh, from the Old Testament about the day of the Lord coming back in power to rectify everything. And we have stories about the Messiah and Jesus is the Messiah. So you can see how it makes sense. We have it in our art. I mean, the, the last judgment from Michelangelo with Jesus is standing, sending people to heaven and to hell. I mean, that's power, right? And so, uh, I had a fellow I was in the seminary with, and he went on to some fame. He's actually presently the Archbishop in Newark. And uh, he's a weightlifter, which is kind of an odd, well, unusual, let me put it that way, for a, uh, a bishop. He doesn't wear the hat or anything while he's doing the weightlifting. But, but uh, he was asked why he, uh, he wanted to be, uh, why, why he took a weightlifting. And just as a joke, there's a, um, in uh, the Catholic Cathedral in Washington, there's a big mural above the altar. And Jesus is depicted there as Christ the King. But it, it's a little different because Christ is standing like this, you see, with a bare chest and, and a body that anybody would love, right? And, and a, a purple cloak so that you recognize Christ the King. And he said that, that was his model that he wanted to be Christ the King. That's great to the Archbishop. So, but anyway, aside from all that, it's all over the place, this, this whole idea. In fact, it's very much part of trying to understand Western history. Uh, you know, Constantine, when uh, the emperor of Rome, when he wanted to gather his forces and so on, and, and he was a master politician, he put two things together. He put the sun god of the Romans together with Jesus. Right? And that's why it's so popular to put the halo around uh, 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 Jesus and the saints and so on, right? The Son of God. And, and it worked for him. It worked for him. He, he's not the best example of things, but nevertheless, he used that imagery, that power. Right? And Augustine separated the world into the power of the state and the power of the church, right? That's the way he understood it. And of course, who was more important? The power of the church because of Jesus. He didn't use the term Christ the King, but that's what he's getting at. And that's all through the Middle Ages. We had the Pope stepping in, in the name of Jesus, to say who would be king, who wouldn't be king, and so on, down to Henry VIII, and so on. And, and just think about, the, even, even going beyond that, you think about John Knox and John Calvin, how they, they ruled as kings, right? They had the power of God on their side, right? And it's, that flavor is still resides down deep in our culture. That, that kind of approach to the world we live in as a matter of power, right? And, and you get political power so you can make civil things work. It's a very interesting kind of history there. So it's all, it's part of our whole culture, right? Right down to, I mean, I, I, I left out the, the bloody 16th and 17th century religious wars when the argument was, who is on God's side, right? It's just, it, you know, it kind of it hits you in the head and say, that's something wrong with that picture. Anyway, so we know that power is part of our history of understanding Christianity. Let me take a step back. Then you read the gospel, today's gospel. Right? And here you have the, the, the the figure of power in Pilate, certainly the Roman Empire of its day, right? Raw, unadulterated power. Right? In this dialogue, the assumption is that Pilate could send Jesus away, could, could trade, and, and that's part of the dialogue. But the point is that that's the power that he had, right? 
and he questions Jesus. It's a, basically like, who, who do you think you are? Yeah. Where, where do you come from? What, what, what are you about? And, and Jesus, <coughs> Jesus says to him, it, so, well, like my translation, if you allow me, it, is that you don't get it, do you? My power is not what you're talking about. My power is from another world. You know, think about it. If I had your kind of power, where would be all those people, the followers of mine? They'd be screaming and yelling at the gates or something. Anyway, there would have been a battle. Here, Jesus stands alone. And it, it, if you think about it, it's a terrible picture. Mark, in Mark's Gospel, after uh, Palm Sunday, big day, right? Gradually over that week, he shows how one group of Jews after another, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the lawyers, and so on, each one of them come and test Jesus, they're dissatisfied, and they walk away. It doesn't end there. The disciples right, go to sleep. And then when the danger comes, they go. And not only that, Peter, the big shot, big mouth, and so on, right? He denies Jesus. Right? And then you take Jesus from there. And you see him that he's humiliated, right? Dressed as a, a mock king with a piece of purple purple cloth, like the Romans did, right? And slapped and beaten and spit upon and humiliated in all kinds of ways and put a crown of thorns on his head, you see? And march him out, and that's what Pilate sees. And you can almost understand Pilate's question. This, what, what's the big deal about this? Nothing here. It's, no way, and, and it's, it's the perfect way that the Romans dealt with their enemies, to humiliate them in front of everybody. That's what putting a person on a cross is. And that sarcasm on the cross that says, this is the king of the Jews. Right. Take a look at that. Right? So there's something wacky about this feast of Christ the King. Something's different, but it, it really shouldn't surprise you. Right? I mean, Jesus didn't preach very, very well about power. He didn't, he didn't teach uh, to suppress your enemies, right? He said, love your enemies. He had all these crazy things about helping the poor, the downtrodden, the, the lame, the deaf, those who are punished, those who are outcasts in society. Those are the ones he said that they're the important ones in the society. That's not the way it works. The way it works should be that the powerful are the ones who give power. Right? Those around the king are the ones who love things. Jesus flipped that over. Right? And that kind of, uh, of uh, magic is hard to understand if you, if you are thinking in terms of power, like power. It's hard to understand it's hard to understand how Jesus has any followers at all, right? There has to be something about the teachings of Jesus that makes sense to people. Not only makes sense, but gives them a certain kind of power. A different kind, a different order of things. So when we look at Francis of Assisi, right? who strips naked, right, and gives away everything to the poor and spends his whole life trying to take care of the poor, what's the source of that power for him to do that? What allows him to do that? What allows Dorothy Day right, to go before Congress and be grilled on pacifism, that teaching of Jesus, by the way, during the Second World War, which is often said the model for the just war, she still went before Congress and didn't back, back down an inch. Right? What, what is that power? Right? We have to believe that it is that power of the teaching of Jesus, the power of the way that, is, that we celebrate on Christ the King. It is, you know, I, I, uh, I, 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 I'm kind of uh, like anybody, I guess, uh, 
I love these stories about people in uh, oh, I don't know, Russia, people in, uh, under a dictatorship, you know, people perhaps even Haiti in our day, right? who have in their head ringing uh, as an American, all men are created equal. Right? There's something about that that straightens up your back. And you understand what they would go through to get to that place. That's the amazing thing. That's the kind of power we're talking about. The power of the teaching of Jesus is so rich in what it means to be human that it has that power. We have to believe that. And there's lots of examples of it. There are examples in our own world. I, I, and disciples, I, I, uh, I uh, read a book, and I have to admit that I, that a lot of it kind of leaked out the other ear kind of thing. And that's the wrong image, right? To, I don't know how you leak out of your eyes. But anyway, anyway, my problem. The, the idea behind it was that uh, of those things, there was one story in there. In Nanking, during, before the, well, I guess pre-World War II, right? It was conquered by the Japanese. And the soldiers were absolutely berserk, right? It, it, it's called, the, the story is usually labeled the rape of Nanking, right? It's just a terrible, terrible story. And they were after everybody who was Chinese, right? And also those white guys right, from Europe. There was a church there run by the disciples of Christ. You know, it, it kind of a family story, right? Disciples of Christ, and they stood in front and allowed the uh, what we might call refugees to hide in the hospital. And they stood and refused to let Japanese soldiers enter the hospital. You, you think about it. What gives them that power? Right? What, what is it that is? It's the way. It's the teaching of Jesus. It means so much that allows you to have power. Think about it. Uh, the uh, congressman who just died last year, John Lewis, I think it was just last year, he died. And, and uh, he, he stood at the bottom of the bridge in Selma, right? And it's not the only thing. The man went to prison. He, you know, anyway, this one example. Right? But he was so driven by the faith that when they faced the state troopers, right, and horseback and clubs that were there, right, they saw the weapons. What gave them the power to stand their ground? And he did. And he got his skull cracked, right? Broken arm, face blown up, and so on. But what gave him that power? That's the power that we're talking about. That's Jesus' power, if you know. And just like, just like uh, the... Uh, you know, all men are created equal. Just like the power, the, the, the glory that is American, right, has a checkered history. You know, we can't, we can't deny what we've done and uh, fairly often, and they're still doing it. Right? And so the church, in the same way, has that same power, but it has a checkered history. I, I'm, uh, uh, in a sense, terribly embarrassed by... Uh, St. Thomas More, remember, man for all seasons, depicted as this noble character who stood up to Henry VIII. But he thought nothing of burning at the stake people who were trying to print the scriptures in English. And, uh, he was able to do that, why? Because he had the power you just like shake your head and say, can we scrub the history a little bit better than that? Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's, and it's happened any number of times, any number of times, right? <clears throat> we have to own up to that, right? And it is part of it. So the, the, the way I, I like to say it is that Christ the King is nice, but it's a paradox. It captures the power, if you will, of Jesus preaching and teaching. Yes, it does. 
but it also allows for it to be used, just like Constantine used it, right? The popes of the Middle Ages used it. The, the founders of much of Protestantism used it, you see. The kings who came after it during the, the terrible religious wars down to the Northern Ireland, you know, and so on, and we're still doing the same thing. You know, we did have free crusades in the name of Christianity. So it is a hard feast, and it might be good though. You know, it, it, it's not just, we, it, it kind of like you have to face up to it, guys. This, uh, this Christianity is, I, I like to describe it, it's kind of lumpy in, in its history. Right? It's, it's done wonders for the world. And it's a marvelous thing, and I love it, you see. But it's a challenge. It's a historical challenge. And it's not the only challenge. What we, we sometimes forget is that the teachings of Jesus have power because they're so radical. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Okay? That's not so easy. The more you think about it, right? I mean, is there never a time when it makes sense? The really movie doesn't have a footnote there, you know? Go sell what you have and give it to the poor. Now, remember that story where the lawyer asked and Jesus said, you know, do all that stuff. Well, if you want to follow me, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. What do you have after that? There's one fellow, one kid I had in class, that, and when I said that, what do you have? And he said to me, you have one more poor person. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. So, I mean, the, the teachings of Jesus are radical. We, we are faced, I, I uh, myself, have, have come, had to come to grips with the groups of people that we have so well defined that we can look down on, right? Uneducated. People who don't believe, who don't uh, think the way I do, right? People who root for the Yankees. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know what I mean. There are people, there are groups, gays and lesbians were, were in a group, and they were, they were uh, uh, kind of ostracized, put down, attacked, physically and so on. It took a while for us as Christians to get our hands around. It's not completely done yet, right? Still not done, right? All these things, all these things in the whole world that we live in, the Dalit, the uh, untouchables, such a horrid story of, of how a whole nation of a billion, well, they're not all Indians, but a whole nation, right, can look down upon the, a, a caste as a whole group of people that think the only job they can do is clean toilets. Only can do. And, the, and the, the, the exception is not accepted. The, the doctors and so on who are Delhi are never respected in, in that culture. I mean, this, I mean, we have so much to do. We have so much to do. But what we have to remember with the challenge and with the field that part of our history, part of who we are, right? We have Jesus and his will and his power to make things happen. That is the fundamental piece of faith that we have to accept. The Christ the King, a feast that was instituted for political reasons by the, I'm sorry, by, the, by a pope, uh, dealing with the, with the Italians and so on to get the, the Vatican State used this idea of Christ the King. That, that's who's on my side, right? That's where my power comes from uh, to, to make a deal with uh, Mussolini. That's where it started, kind of ironically. But that feast, nevertheless, is a challenge to us. One, admit who we are and what we are, what our history is, and so on. Yeah, that's right. But we are a people of forgiveness, right? Including ourselves. But the challenge still is there to live in the power of Jesus. And I wish I had known, and I, I'm, 
I have to apologize to Kelly. I wish I had uh, read the words to that song. But all I did was check the song, right? And, and th those words capture what I was trying to say better than I. Did. 